Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer. Say, do you know what propaganda is? It's when a British person takes a really close look at something. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at Nerthania, Collapsing World from Board Game Bear. In Earthania, a collapsing world from Board Game Bear, two to four players take on the roles of various factions. This takes place about, oh, 250 years after an energy impact forever changed our world and turned it into a changing, morphing landscape. The four factions here are the Step Dwellers, the Northerners, the Jungle Maidens, and the Forest Warriors. Now, there are four different regions on the board that correspond with the four different factions. Now, at the beginning of the game, you're going to set up the game board. Now, initially, it's just a section of water. You're going to take uh, certain cards that corresponded to uh, the different sections of the board out uh, of the uh, deck. You're going to look at them. You're going to actually place dice there just to mark them. But then you're going to place different kinds of tile terrain on these different areas on the board. Now, those spaces that had uh, dice left on them, they're, they become just the water. They're, they're, they're lakes and, and oceans and what have you. Players are also going to get their own set of battle cards, which will serve them during the game. And then you will also get your own tribal sheet. And this tribal sheet will have places for you to kind of build uh, more buildings that you can then use during the game. But it will also kind of have your act action selection dial off to the side. There will also be a place for you to mark how many resources you have to spend every round. Now, essentially, every round, you'll have different phases. You'll have a phase where you uh, kind of complete and determine new terraforming. And then, of course, you will have your actions that will play out during the game. Now, first of all, you have terraforming. Essentially, you're going to grab two of the uh, kind of location cards. The top card will tell you which part of the board, uh, according to its number, will be terraformed. And then the bottom part will tell you how it is terraformed, meaning if it's either grassland or mountainous or ocean. It will tell you whether you kind of go up or you go down. And you place your marker there on that spot to determine how that's going to play out at the end of the round. Now, players will go around. They will each take an action from kind of their action selection area of their tribal board. And they can go ahead and uh, take one of those at a time until they run out of options for actions. Now, the first action you can take is collect resources. You can select three uh, areas there in, your, in any one region, and you can collect resources from them. Essentially, you can collect the uh, resources that you will then add to your resource dial. But also, from mountain regions, you may be able to gain Tectonium. Now, Tectonium is another special kind of resource that will allow you to purchase some of your heavier weapons during the game. Now, the second thing you can do is build. You have to pay, I think, three silver, but you go ahead, you select your, that for your action, and then you can go ahead and build one of your buildings onto your player board. Now, these buildings will allow you to do different things, construct bigger, heavier, and meaner weapons as the game goes on. Now, Action 3 lets you recruit. You can go ahead and you can always recruit warriors. They're your most basic uh, figures on the board. But you have, If you have the correct buildings, you can recruit archers, which can shoot at range. You can select um, shield bearers, which can take damage and you know eat up damage. And then you can also uh, select some of these bigger, badder, more powerful weapons as the game goes on. But you can even build things like uh, the, the port, the fishery, where you can actually fish to gain even more resources from the lakes uh, nearby. Now, number four is move and attack. You can essentially activate a space and move all the units from that space into adjacent spaces, but you can move to a space and conduct an attack, and I will discuss attacking a little bit later. Action number five is the same thing, but this costs you a little bit more. So you can do that action twice, but it will cost you. 
Action six is to level up your battle cards. Essentially, for a price, you can go ahead and surrender one of your cards and then take the next highest level of that card. Now, your cards become more powerful the higher level they are, so that is something you'll want to consider, especially if you're planning on a lot of combat. Action number seven is terraforming. Now, this is in addition to the game's natural terraforming that happens every turn, but you can essentially transform one area next to you into one of the other kinds of... Uh, uh, terrain. So you could turn it you know, into grassland, into mountains, into uh, water, uh, but that will give you the option to transform that, and that could be helpful from a tactical point of view, keeping enemies away, or if there are certain resources you want to gain. For instance, if a place is grasslands and you may want a mountain there so you can get more Tectonium. Now, after everyone has already taken their actions, you can go to the terraforming phase. Essentially, all those tokens you'd placed out at the beginning of the phase, you now go ahead and act them. You change the uh, tiles, either, as I say, from grasslands to mountains to oceans. You go ahead, you change those things, so the board, every round, is constantly changing. Now, if you ever have any figures that are on one of those pieces of land and it's transformed into water, you lose them. Now, each faction has its own set of dice. Their battle cards are a little bit different... Uh, in stating exactly what the dice faces are on each of those die. Uh, so what you're going to do is during combat, you're going to add up all your power. You're gonna take a look at all of your warriors, uh, your shield bearers, your archers, uh, any other creatures you have. You're gonna roll all of the appropriate dice and then you're going to see what happens. Essentially, you're going to go ahead and count up all of the hits that you have inflicted and communicate that to the defender or the attacker. And then you're going to look and see how many hits you've taken and how many you can absorb. So if you have shield bearers, they can just absorb the damage. Some other uh, items may also allow you to absorb damage. Uh, you can also bring in reinforcements. If you roll the reinforcement, you can bring in another unit and roll a die for that unit as well. You may roll retreat symbols, in which case you will have the option to retreat. You can roll the panic symbol, which causes the immediate retreat of an enemy unit. Now, during the combat, players will also play their battle cards, and their battle cards will give specific advantages to certain kinds of units that, they're, that they have that are employed in that battle. And again, they can give them more attack, they can absorb more damage, they can do all sorts of funky things. Now, a battle card will say how far a unit can move, it will say exactly what it, the level of that battle card is, it will say what the special abilities of the battle card is, and it will also show the various dice faces, uh, the, the die phase for that unit's uh, die. Whoever has the most units standing at the end of the battle wins, and the loser must retreat from that location. Now, as players are doing this, as they're expanding, as they're moving, as they're attacking, as they're defending, as all these things are going on, there are certain goal cards that are placed out to the side of the board. These seven goal markers spell out specific conditions under which the player can gain points, and you place one of your cubes on that, uh, on that uh, goal card to indicate that you have scored that, uh, that card. So players go around and around, they are beginning the terraforming process, they are selecting the various actions from their deck, they are engaging in combat, trying to fulfill the goal conditions, scoring the goals, and then, of course, uh, completing the terraforming for that round. Now, players are going to do this for a number of set rounds, depending on player count, and at the end of that number of rounds, whoever has the most points wins! Nerthania, Collapsing World. Now, of course, there's more going on here than that. There are special kind of score tokens that at the beginning of the game a player can place anywhere in their area that affects another player. If they actually get there and, and get that, they get another point. So there's some other things that are going on here as well. But basically, this is a game of uh, where you have to change your strategies because, again, the board is always changing. It's never clear where your, your pathways to attacking enemies or retreating from enemies will be because you've always got this changing board. So it's a very interesting idea here specifically too because you can also change the board uh, during your turn but every action you take is going to cost you uh, resources it's going to cost you one of the uh, few actions you have every round so you have to be very careful in how you are planning your uh, strategy every round and of course as I say it is always changing the game boasts multiple unique tiles for each location each uh, unit has its own set of die. Again, these are unique with the, with the various faces, uh, depending on what your faction is and what your uh, units from that faction bring to the table. You've also got a host of unique beasts and animals that you can train, that you can use to uh, take with you when your army is moving and attacking. You've got a lot of different buildings that you can build that give you special abilities. But of course, you're never going to be able to get them all, so you have to pick and choose wisely what buildings and what units they produce that you want to bring to your game. 
And this Kickstarter campaign will be up shortly. I will post the details and the link to that uh, campaign in the description of this video. And if this looks like a game that you might be interested in, then you are definitely going to want to check out the Kickstarter campaign for Nerthania Collapsing World. Thank you once again, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, my Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We'd ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. I'd also ask you, ladies and gentlemen, to please check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about military history, books on history, fun things like that. I even post some of my uh, history lectures on that channel, so please check that out. Please subscribe. It would mean a lot to me. If you get a chance, please leave a thumb for this video on Board Game Geek. And I'd also ask you to, uh, I'd humbly ask you to click on the Super Thanks button and leave a tip. You know, I may offend vegans with all of the meat that I eat, but it's all plant based. Meat processing plant. Uh, number five, the DC Comics deck building game, the Zack Snyder Cut.